Alright. Today, I'm making a stout. It's, uh, I call it Raven Stout. It's a recipe I've used a number of times before. I've already measured out all my ingredients into a vacuum sealed bag so I can just pour it all in and grind away. I'll give you the ingredient list for this particular stout probably in the description below. In the meantime, I actually did a little different on this one. I added some rye into the grains. I love the flavor of rye in there. So let's be a little loud while I grind this up and then we'll move on to the next part. And there we go. Now the mill here, this is a Corona style mill. It does a nice job grinding all the grains up. There's some stuck on my shelf in there. So I got a little wooden shelf that I attach it to the bucket with. See the screws here on the outside. From there, here. There's two over here, though they're hard to see. And when you're done, you just lift my lid. Got a piece of wood in here, holding it in place, right there. Piece of wood. See? All right, then you bring it over. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, so there's two gallons of water in there. Two gallons of hot water with liquor. Now we'll pour some of the grain in. And we're just gonna hold dump that all right in, nice and hard. You're gonna want it mixed in the end anyway, so I'm gonna have to hold this with my left hand, which is a little bit shaky. See if I can do this. And stir with my right hand. And stir it up good so you don't get any dough balls in there. Doesn't look like much in that container, does it? But it'll work. I've done it before, it'll work. Okay, so now I gotta get the temperature sensor out and temperature this and get it back up. Okay, now when checking the mash temperature, it's important to check different areas of the mash as you get hot spots and cold spots and if the temperature probe leaning against something that works against you too. As I swirl it around in the mash here you can see it's kind of fluctuating 154, 153, had a 155 there so I'm maintaining a good temperature. The mash has been in there for about 10 minutes. So we're going to take the probe out, let all that goodness stay in there with this closed. I gotta say, not having a uh, not having a tripod makes this really hard. At least hard to film anyway. But we'll figure it out. This may never make it to production. I don't okay. honestly know. So we're nearing the end of the mash. During the mash process, I had to add another four quarts of water in here to get the temperature back up to what it was supposed to be. It's a good idea to check the temperature in your mash, especially if you don't have a heated system in here, which this isn't. It's just a cooler. So having done that, I now have more water up here. You can't see the kettle. Hold on a second. Oh, you've seen the kettle before, actually. But if I do that, there we go. There's the kettle right there. I've got more water in there heating up now to an appropriate temperature, which in my case happens to be about 202 degrees. We're reading 202 on the nose right now. So we're going to add about two gallons of that into here to bring this temperature up to 168, which is the mash out temperature, and that stops the conversion of the starches into sugars. It basically shuts those enzymes in there and down when you're doing that conversion. So we're going to let it sit at that for about 10-15 minutes before we actually start sparging into the brew kettle in order to make the beer, or make the wort, is actually what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to shake you guys for a minute. Uh, 
bring you over so you can see it. Not that it matters all that much, I suppose, but let's see. There we go. Ouch. The problem with holding it like this so you can see it is that I can't really see what you're seeing, but that's okay. Hopefully you're getting the whole picture in here. Now let's see if I can turn this, sorry. Apologize for flipping you all around here. Oh, hear that? That's my timer. So what are we at now for temperature? And we'll stir it around in here, make sure. 56, 57, 59, 60, 62. 63, looks like I might need to put a little bit more in, huh? 64, yeah, a little more. All right, so let's do that. Let's put a little bit more of this in. All right, put you guys down for that, I guess. That's not an exact temperature on there. I am at 166. You can ignore the 210. We'll just, just ignore the 210. 166 Fahrenheit, which is close enough to our mash out to get there. So, with that being close enough, we're going to let that rest now for 10 minutes. 15. Yeah. Got to heat up some more water to sparge through into our brew kettle. And then we'll be ready to boil and boil and boil. A lot of patience here, but it's worth it in the end. The mash is now done. I've got my sparge water heating up here. It needs to go to 168. Not quite there yet. That's okay because in the meantime, we're going to do what's called bar loffing. And that's um, where we take some of the grits. We start the sparge a little bit. I have a little two quart container in here that I'm actually doing this into right now, I'm not doing it right into the brew kettle. We're just trying to set the grain bed here. So we draw off a couple times so our wort is nice and clear when it comes out. Now on the dark wort, it is hard to tell when it's clear. That is a true story. However, I usually draw off three quarts or so. And that usually does pretty well. In the future, I hope to have an RIMS set up here so that I can just recirculate through the whole thing. In fact, I'm working on that. Uh, there may be a video coming up about putting that all together later on. Uh, right now, I have the parts. I'm still working on getting it in. Uh, but that's the side point for here.